So I wanted to thank um, the pirate uh, so pirate streaming portals because of you. The the, law, the eyes of law enforcement are ignoring us. As a shout out to you at the beginning of the video, thank you for all you do. You've mopped up all the attention, and so our torrent sites have been running for 10 plus fucking years. I don't talk about my torrent sites anymore. I don't say where I go to get my stuff anymore because I got a message from somebody on the site, and they were like, stop talking about it publicly. And I was like, oh, yeah, that sounds like a good idea. I should shut up. You know, I've got a privilege. I don't need everybody to, I don't need to brag about it. You know, it's, it's cool. I just get to, you know, kick back and enjoy it, and nobody needs to know. So I, you know, I kind of just don't talk about it anymore. I don't, you know, hush hush about where I get my content from. I don't want to blow the whistle on any of it anymore. And like, no, no, thanks, you know. So, but I, I wanted to say this because of the fact that, you know, prohibition of internet piracy kind of reminds me of the war on drugs and that in both cases, the government is going to lose in the end. I mean, it's a war and the government is slated, like the outcome is predetermined with the pirates winning at the end. You know, and just like the drugs are going to win the war on drugs in the end. What we are seeing is a government that it really is only trying to save face out of humiliation. You know, and and, and that's the truth. I mean, it's, it's the uncensored truth about all of this. So I wanted to say this about America's opium epidemic. The more that I learned about what was going on on the streets, I became more and more in agreement with the majority of the public and the idea that drug dealers were scumbags. Now, I, I share that sentiment with the rest of you, but my area of dissent with the rest of you is that I think that the whole language of codependency has become part of the problem. You know, so what I wanted to say in all this is that, you know, our politicians have said that we can't ultimately, you know, wave a white flag when it comes to the drug menace, but truth of the matter is that we can and we should and what do i mean by waving the white flag well my proposal and idea would be would work something like this so i know that people that are addicted to this particular stuff are going to be suspicious of anybody that they don't happen to know uses the drug themselves it's one way to filter and make sure that you know the people that they traffic with are in, and engage with are you know, trustworthy to them. And so what I would do is find a heroin addict as a society, first of all, get that person on board with us, convert them any way that we possibly can and tell them that we mean them no harm, basically. Maybe find one that's in recovery and is struggling to recover from it and come back from it. Get them to tell them what we're intending to do. I mean, forecast it to them, tell them we want to create a registry of the people that are infected with this, stuff, that, that, that have this sickness that you have, basically, because what we want to try a different approach. I mean, they've become menaces to society. They're stealing from everybody. On, you know, they're doing all kinds of things to sustain their habits. And we just think it would be more cost effective in the end to, you know, create a system where the pharmaceutical companies give them this Mac, you know, like, it, like I mean, if they want to get clean, they can go to a rehab clinic, you know, but as long as they want to keep using, I think that the system should just keep supplying it to them because, I mean, really, at the end of the day, it will mean less break-ins, it will mean less unintended, you know, consequences of their of their habit, less, you know, uh, property crime and everything else that is associated with them being an addict. I mean, so we want to figure out who it is that's addicted, create a list of the names and give them free smack. I mean, it's, you know, and a place to go and a place to be monitored by medical professionals, you know, we just want to create a registry you know, of all these people, and it's not going to be used to, you know, create bust or anything. It's just, so we'd like your help, because they're more likely to trust somebody that they already know is addicted. And then you go and you create on that list, and you create a registry, and then you go and, you know, once you have it, you do, you follow through, you give them what, you know, what you fucking said, and, and it works a lot better than what we do, because the more that I learned about the heroin problem and the more that I studied it, you know, and I did, I did research, I, you know, so I watched them. Um, now, I think that it's a bad idea to call it research because, you know, what, what I did in effect was watch YouTube videos, but the YouTube videos that I did watch, they did cite a lot of like um, scientific publications and what they did. And I mean, I wish that I, I wish that I had all that stuff off, off the top of my head to put in the underbar to this video. But what what came out 
effectively in summary for all that stuff. I mean, I can track it down if you as an audience really want me to and really want me to do the homework there. I mean, if you if you want me to, to go and go through that video and insist on me going through it again instead of just summarizing it and taking my word for it so that I can provide you with the research that I actually looked at, I'd be more than happy to, to go and update this video or make an update and, and, you know, update it, put it in the underbar and tell you guys that I updated it. But the truth... The truth of the matter is that I what, what I ended up reading about all of it was that pharmaceutical grade heroin is not like you know street heroin. There are fundamental differences that exist between you know like the street the, the stuff that people are able to get from drug dealers and the stuff that you know a, a shot of morphine that they will give to somebody that is in acute pain. So that tells that's instructive. It tells you everything that you need to know. I mean, the drug dealers are unscrupulous individuals who. Don't give a shit about anything else, anything other than making money. And so their stuff gets cut with like paint thinners and people are taking that shit and then directing, injecting it directly into their fucking veins. When a person gets morphine, that opium has been purified. It's, it, it's been put through a process that guarantees all those impurities and toxicities are re like removed from it because we have a, a nanny system, you know, that, you know, one of the things that the nanny system does and Big Brother does is it's looking out for its people. I mean, when it works, and, and so uh, when it works, nobody says anything or seems to notice because, you know, nothing went wrong. But when it fails, I mean, that's when everybody starts, you know, to, to fucking, their minds get blown and they're like, you know, they're, you know they, they may blame the government, but really the problem isn't with government itself. It's with insufficient services offered by the government that got cut back and downsized too fucking much to actually intervene to make sure that the product was actually safe and not you know just thrown onto the market haphazardly so really at the at the at the end of the day you know when it when it comes to all this and when it comes to what's what's happening i mean I think a different approach is what we need to embrace when it comes to the war on drugs. We need to we need to get away from the prohibition mindset and move towards harm reduction. I mean, it, why isn't anybody thinking that the primary problem with all this is all the harm that it causes? I mean, it's not that people are using; it's that people are people are the, there are harms to themselves and to their communities and to the people that they're surrounded by. I mean, that's the that's the real problem. And if we can find a way to give them the drug that they want to use in a safe manner that, you know, doesn't end up impacting everybody else, except in the very narrow sense of having to contribute the tax revenue, you know, but it's cheaper in the end for society ultimately to just give them the pharmaceutical grade stuff than it, than it will be, you know, to, to, uh, to allow them to continue in this cycle of, of never ending break-ins and, Thiever, thiever, you know, stealing and robbery and property crime and everything else that these people engage in. I mean, and, and not only that, but their lives are falling apart and they've got loved ones that care about them and everything, but they can't, you know, they can't stay with them anymore because of all the problems that, you know, that are caused by their habit and all the, un, you know, un, 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 associated behavior that goes along with being an addict. And so, I think addiction is a sickness. I don't think anybody that that is currently addicted necessarily wants to continue being addicted. I think that they'd love to be able to break the habit, but that they just can't, you know, they've got difficulty with it, you know? And so my, my own, my own thinking is that it's, it's, it's the sickness, you know, and that it, it's better dealt with by the medical community, but what the medical community should do is keep giving their addicted patients the opium because if you don't give it to them some fucking low-level drug dealer is going to instead you know and and, and that's really just as as some it, it really is that simple about all of it i mean it, it doesn't I, I mean i i hate to break it to you but it really ultimately is and so you know i'm i'm against prohibition and the only reason why you know, to start the discussion with the opioid epidemic, the, the ultimate reason to start there is because, you know, it's the most stigmatized and, and because of it, it's it's also the most, it's the most lied about. I mean, how, how, how else can I put this except to say that there is a group of people that is given what, you know, a, a derivative of heroin, you know, called morphine because they're in acute pain. 
I mean, what morphine and heroin have in common is that they are both derived from opium. There's one group of people that's given it for a short period of time by our system. You know, some of that group of people splits off into a second group that becomes addicted. That second group is cut off by the system at that point and left to die. And that's really the problem at the end of the day. The people, they don't choose death, you know. Instead, they try to find a way to keep using and stay alive, you know, and, and that's just that's just how people are. You know, nobody, nobody's going to choose to go die in some corner or suffer through the withdrawal at that point. You know, they're going to find a way to keep using after that. Now, maybe a very narrow group of that people stops, but, you know, like the withdrawal from heroin is just hellish from what, you know, we have been told, you know, and, and, and so nobody... Nobody would choose to go through that, you know, nobody would want to suffer through that sort of thing. And so people like we we don't get it. We like we 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 act like if a doctor continued to do that and to supply that that would be enabling, you know, an addict. And it's like there are people that the system did precisely that for and they ended up becoming healthy, productive, meaningful members of society. I mean, the author of National Velvet, you know, as a book, you know, she was a heroin addict an opium addicted person who became a a, 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 a pretty well-known and, you know, national seller of a, a book, you know, that, that a lot of people have read and know about. And, you know, we like, they would call them a smackhead today, the politicians, you know, you know, and I, 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 I just, I think that it's tragic that our system does this, that it cuts them off and just condemns people because what they're going to do is they're going to turn to a drug dealer and, and it's going to cause all kinds of, all kinds of problems that it wouldn't have caused, you know, in a world in which the doctors just kept giving them the drug that they'd become addicted to, you know, you've got two scenarios here and one of them would create less harm for the patient than the other. If the doctors kept giving them their drug, they would get a cleaner version of it. It would cause and produce a lot less damage to them and to their surrounding society. It would reduce the harm. If they turn to the streets, it's going to increase the harm. So my my thinking is both options suck, but I'm going to choose the one that sucks the less. less.